Hello and welcome to the inside of someone's garage. Actually, no, a very early 280SE, uh, left-hand drive in South Africa. Long story. Um, the car's been dormant for 20 years, and it's a good example to show you the pros and cons, what to look for when you want to buy one of these or when you own it. Um, so yeah, here we go. Enjoy. So if you're anything like me, you like to start with the nasty stuff and get to the chocolate bit later. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the, the cons, the negative things that you should look for when you're buying or when you own a W116. Here we go. The first negative of the W116 is probably its age. At the time of making this video, the glorious year of 2020, they're all between 40 and 48 years old. That means they have a lack of modern luxury, safety and convenience features, which obviously influences their daily drivability. Most of them didn't have ABS, some didn't even have AC, almost all of them didn't come with airbags, and they most certainly didn't have Bluetooth and active lane missile guidance. Some of that stuff can be retrofitted, but the lack of tech may be appealing to some owners. The next negative point is consumption, or gas mileage. We can't speak for the 300 SD, which is probably the most economical in the range, because all 6s and 8 pots are incredible gas guzzlers. If you're even slightly worried about fuel consumption, stay away from the W116. These cars cruise very well, but the revs are quite high. Especially the 3 and 4 speeds will do at least 3,000-4,000 RPM at motorway speeds. They are built to do this, they can do it all day long. But if you like a quiet cruiser where you can't hear the engine, maybe look elsewhere. They will rev quite high at highway speeds. Another thing to consider is the low ride height of these cars, also because of their relatively long wheelbases. In today's SUV mad world, they're simply a victim of the time, so you should be careful around steep driveways and speed bumps. Parts supply can be an issue, including wear and tear items, but that comes with regional terms and conditions. Check your area for supply of parts. Smaller engine parts like gaskets, seals, hoses, clamps are all available, but some can be expensive or temporarily out of stock. Pirate or copy parts are sometimes a good idea, but it's best to check with the experts. On some petrol models, the exhaust manifolds like to crack, and that can be an expensive fix. Other components like pumps, pulleys, radiator, alternator, etc. are still available, but check with your local agents. Mercedes-Benz can supply quite a few of these items, but in most cases their workshops aren't equipped or even bothered to work on these cars. So, unless you're handy with a spanner, find a good independent Mercedes specialist or mechanic who knows these cars. Depending on your region, a decent scrapyard or eBay, Amazon and other online resources will come in very handy. We start the exterior check of the car with an obvious one, rust. Unless the car lived in a very dry climate, Check all the leading edges of the body, the bottom sills, jacking points, wheel arches, especially if they're covered in chrome trims, and the fuel filler cap. There's a little pipe to drain spillage, and that likes to get blocked, and then this happens. Another consideration is paint. These cars have huge bodies with lots of aging, brittle trim. It costs a lot to repaint a W116 properly. If you can, get underneath the car to check the floor, exhaust and suspension for rust or nasty impact damage. Remember, these cars can quickly bottom out. While you're down there, <laughs> give the brakes a once over and check for any leaks. Back on the top, the windshield, trunk and door rubbers can perish. In hot and dry climates, they go hard and crack eventually. Most of them are still available, but quite expensive. Same for the bumper rubbers. These often have chunks taken out of the corners from car park battles. Ditto for the front grille and its shiny cross members. Next to check are the tyres. These older sizes can be difficult and expensive to find. 
And remember, after about 10 years, you should replace them, even if they still have a decent amount of tread on them. Or, as people in South Africa like to call it, thread. These are relatively heavy beasts. They can carry loads and do high speeds, so get them proper rubber. As for the interior, check on the overall condition and originality of the various items. Heat or sun damage will crack the dash, usually exactly down the middle, and warp seats or rear headrests if they fit it. Original leather or MB Tech seats should have perforations in their central or middle panels. Carpets, dash, door pockets and other trim should vaguely match the seat color. If they don't, they've been messed with. As for audio systems, W116s did not come with Sony Triple D Bass Hello Happy Rainbow LCD head units. What you want is an old Becker or Blaupunkt unit. Unless, of course, the owner wants modern convenience, then anything goes. Check for the proper function of the very few switches and levers in these cars, including a usually tired and worn-out multifunction indicator wiper stalk. Mechanical window winding mechanisms can go wrong, or the power window switches like to break or stick. Replacements are available for Mercedes-Benz, even if the only thing that's wrong with yours is that the fake chrome is peeling off. The climate control units, which applies to mostly US and Canadian models, is often faulty and can be quite a mare to fix. Other maintenance issues we've come across include a clunky front suspension, noisy rear axle, dodgy or stubborn door locks, cracked front or rear light covers, these can be quite expensive to replace, frozen or lethargic instrumentation, sometimes with faded or discolored needles, and sagging or collapsed seat bottoms. Handling and drivability is something you should also consider. These are 40 plus year old tanks, so don't expect sharp cornering. There'll be lots of body roll, they lean into corners and they don't take kindly to fast and numerous changes in direction. The steering is quite vague and usually has quite a bit of play around the center from a worn steering box. The brakes should be decent, but remember, there's usually no ABS fitted. So, if you respect and treat it as the classic it is, the 116 is fairly enjoyable to drive. E. Oh good, you're still with us. Um, now for the chocolate bit, the pros or the reasons you'd want to buy a W116, or stuff you can look forward to if you do own one. Enjoy. The first positive of the W116 is that it still is a very affordable classic Mercedes. Get one now before the prices go up. Most collectors will agree that the previous S-Class is more beautiful and hence collectible and expensive. The one after this, the W126, is often regarded as one of the best everyday classic Mercedes. Most of those had central locking, air conditioning, power windows, even ABS and airbags later on. But back to the W116 positives. One of them is that they have a sublime ride and seat comfort. Wow, these cars ride like a duvet on fluffy clouds suspended by marshmallows. <laughs> Obviously we're exaggerating, but if you've never driven a W116, do yourself a huge favor. Get behind the wheel and find the nearest speed bump. You will be amazed, no, shocked how fast and disdainful a W116 can deal with those pesky humps. It is unbelievable. The next positive is that they are very well built. These things are tanks. Sure, the dashboard panels don't all line up perfectly, but most of these vintage Mercs last forever if you look after them properly. That's the next point. They are very reliable with regular maintenance. Seriously, no jokes. Just spend a little bit of money every now and then, at least once a year would be good, to keep the fluids fresh, give it a little service, and fix anything that may be malfunctioning. The sooner you do it, the better. That leads us to the next point. Most repair items are simple by today's standards. Sure, there are exceptions like early electrics, the electronic fuel injection, and climate control system. Also, some owners complain that adjusting the EU bumpers is nigh on impossible. You can't get them straight. But most items on these cars can be serviced with a socket set, some screwdrivers and a multimeter. 
Last but certainly not least, this is a personal opinion, they not only look but sound great. We've only ever heard 300 SDs over the internet, but there seems to be a nice five-pot burble under that cluck-cluck diesel noise. The M110 inline six-cylinder petrol is quite vocal, from its trademark ticking idle noises to a pleasant six-pot burble, and eventually raspy shrieking at up to 6,500 RPM. The M116 and 117V8s are relatively grumbly in standard form, but most owners fiddle with the exhaust plumbing to make them rumble a bit more. And, seeing that these probably aren't daily commuter cars, that doesn't really matter. In summary, the W116 is a large, comfortable, thirsty tank of a Mercedes. And if you look after it properly, it will most certainly return the favour. Okay, that about wraps it up. Those are the pros and cons of the W116 S-Class. In our next video, we'll look at anecdotes and owner stories of these wonderful, wonderful machines. Um, we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye. dog is missing. He's run away. First he humped the other dog and now he's missing. And they're looking for... Have you seen the dog? Is it in here? No.